Welcome to day two, or part two, of the Sun Ku. And I say Sun Ku because that's the way it's spelled. It's not Sun Ko. It's Sun Ku Laser Engraver and Cutter. I made the internal changes that I spoke of in the first video. Got some expanded metal and removed that uh, aluminum plate. And now you can see I have a much larger span of cutting area which I'm really happy with. It's much better than that small little space that they gave me originally. I've set the, I've cut this fan vent back. Now there's four screws that hold it on the back and I thought I could take it out and cut it off, but it turns out that it's in there where you can't, they've got the welded bars across it. So rather than pulling it out, I had to get my Dremel and cut it off. So it's a little bit ragged, not quite as professional as it might be. I could get in there and sand it, but I'm not going to worry about it because it will certainly function for what it's designed to do. So I'm real happy with the um, internal setup now, and I'm ready to start with the accessories or peripherals. It was like Christmas today. I got to go shopping, and uh, here's what I decided. I updated the the pond pump, I got a pond pump, a little bit better grade pump, it still fits inside my food grade bucket. I'll cut holes in it, put my distilled water in, and use this hose with these rubber seals to get a nice fit on that so it stays nice and clean. I bought some adapters to fit this hose to that. This hose will now connect with the laser um, cooler, the, the hoses that cool the laser beam, so um, this should fit on there, and then that'll go into the pump. Uh, I bought a new compressor. Uh, I was looking at getting a airbrush pump. An airbrush pump will give you the 10 pounds of PSI, uh, but I saw a video that said that they don't put out a constant feed, and um, this guy was recommending that you get a compressor so that you can hold 10 pounds constant. So this will be a little bit more noisy at the start while it fills up with air, but then it shuts off and probably run for quite a while without having to refill. I got all the, uh, this had this little package of all kinds of things in there, and I saw this nozzle here may work just fine for my um, air assist on the inside. Duct work for the exhaust fan, and I'll get that set up, and uh, we'll be ready to go. I will turn us back on when when I've got this stuff installed and we'll see if we can get this thing fired up. So stay tuned. And with the magic of video we're ready to go. Actually it took me about a week to get all the tinkering done that I wanted to do. There was some little minor things that I ran into but all in all it was fairly simple. A little bit of handyman work involved with the ventilation system if you've got a workshop that's easy to vent out of, you might have an easier time than I did. But all in all, it turned out very nice. And I'll show you around to the back. There's the back of the unit coming out of a dryer hose vent there into the squirrel cage that came with the unit. It's really not that bad of a little fan. It's pretty simple. But I was concerned about the electric cord that came with it. First of all, it was very short. And second of all, it's made with an aluminum prong. And it didn't really fit in the plug very well. Kind of loose. I had to wiggle it to get it to connect. And I just was not happy with that. So I replaced the cord with a longer electric cord. Gives me a little bit more security. My compressor, simple to hook up. There was an act there was a hole already in the back of the unit, so I just connected a quick connect to the back. And then there's I'll show you the hose that goes around. Uh, one thing I want to make sure that everyone pays attention to is there's a ground wire here that I have running out to outside, goes through the wall out to a piece of rebar that I put in about three feet into the ground. <clears throat> it keeps the static buildup from causing a problem. And the hose, I mean the ventilation hose, comes to a heater duct. I took a couple of pieces of wood, cut some holes in them so that I could sandwich it and make it fit into the little slots there. 
<clears throat> much tighter fit and I'm able to access my laser tube. My water supply, I changed out the hoses to a more heavy duty hose, a little firmer and less likely to kink. I'm worried about keeping the flow to the tube. I also purchased one additional item that wasn't on my original video. This is a little temperature gauge. It's got a warning sign. I set it to 30 degrees Celsius. If the water temperature hits 30 degrees, I need to shut down and cool the water off. We'll see how long it takes to bring, bring up two and a half gallons of water to 30 degrees. I think I'll get a pretty good run. But don't count on these things. Um, always, when you're operating, keep your hands, you know, come and check this hose from time to time. Make sure it's not hot. These temperature gauges are fairly decent, but they have a reputation of going out with you don't expect it. So you're kind of counting on that to keep your tube alive. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I've got a bucket here. I bought some grommets so that I have a good seal here. My power cord and my heat element are here. The pump's inside on the ground, I mean on the base. And I've also added a, um, a half gallon jug of water that I froze in the freezer. So I put that in there, fill it with water, and we should be able to hold a pretty cool temperature. It's a 40 watt bulb, so how long does that take to heat water? The air assist was fairly simple, straightforward. Um, there's a port here that makes it easy to bring the hose in from the connection from the compressor through this wide opening so that it allows it to pull. I did add a spring system to it so that this stays out of the way as the unit moves around. Again, pretty simple. I used the existing hose from the water pump because it's flexible. It's easy to kink, but I think the air pressure will hold it open, and I'd rather use it here than on the pumping system. My air assist, this was the unit that I identified in the package that I thought was going to be the thing, but it's a little bit big and hard to adjust where it's going to point to. So what I also had included in the package were a couple of these uh, ball inflators. I just carefully cut the tip off, keeping the, the nozzle open so I didn't crush it. And then that just fits right onto the fitting that came with it and goes down through here and will have to be calibrated to hit where the beam is hitting. But it should be easy to get that to be fairly close if you're still wondering what the purpose of the air assist is, I think the clearest way to, to describe it is as this beam hits the material and starts to incinerate, you'll get a flare-up. The This air assist is like trying to light a match in a windstorm. It puts enough wind to keep the flames from building up. So I'll show you that in another video. But anyway, that's the... Uh, setup that I wanted to do now after two weeks of messing around it's time to play with the unit itself so stay tuned for the next video on calibration and setup and thanks for watching